I've now had my MacBook Pro M1 for two months, and I can form my opinions on this computer now. It comes pre-installed with macOS 11, which I don't particularly like. I wish you could roll back to Catalina, but unfortunately you just can't on these M1 computers. On the good side of things, launching apps is extremely fast. It's like you tap them and it comes up, just like on an iPhone or an iPad. And while you can install iOS apps on the Mac, most app developers will take it off the App Store for no reason. I think that Apple should lock down this feature and make it so all apps are available, but you can use this app called iMazing to actually make that feature come back and download them direct off your iPhone to the Mac. We go another year seeing no butterfly keyboard, which is an extremely good thing. Although I don't like this new touch bar design with the escape key and the touch ID key separated, it just doesn't work as good as the original touch bar. Apple also thought that it would be a good idea to make the function key an emoji key or a keyboard switcher. I don't use emoji, so that's just useless to me. One interesting thing is on the bottom of these new Macs, you don't see any of those air vent holes which you do on other Macs. It's probably because this Mac has better cooling since it is of the M1 variant. Performance is great. It has 8GB of RAM standard, which isn't the best. The M1 chip can pretty much beat any Intel Mac, and it can do that with more battery. And it always stays below 100 degrees when just browsing the web or watching video. Coming back to battery life, this is the best battery life I've ever seen in a computer. It lasts two days if you're just browsing the web, and one day if you're doing web browsing, video watching, video editing, and Photoshop work. Standby time is great too. I've left this computer out for days, and it's not really drained any battery. Sadly, Apple still hasn't added any more ports to this computer, but that's unexpected. They also still haven't reduced the bezel size, although that's also unexpected, until they release second gen Apple Silicon hardware. For anyone interested, these are the Geekbench results. It's averagely around 1700 to 1800 single core score. Although this can raise concerns about repair and Apple locking down parts to the M1 chip, and also how's support going to look like? Are we going to see five versions of macOS? And what's patches going to look like? Since we're not getting any more T2 chip or whatever they called it, that's good at least, but I think it's just baked into this M1 chip. So we're going to have to see how good patch or support is and Apple's own support is in the next couple years. So thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.